Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Intuit and doing a stock analysis for it. Um, this one came in by request down in the comment section of one of my other videos. If you have a request of a stock you'd like me to take a look at on the channel, just put it down in the comments. I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me, and eventually I will make a video. If it's a stock that's in the S&P 500, like Intuit is, I post those on YouTube for free. The rest I post over on Patreon. Uh, at the $5 a month tier level. And if you join there and you ever decide to join the full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha, you can get a big discount. Um, I also have a 25% off affiliate link coupon for uh, Fast Graphs, which you'll see me using here at the beginning of this video. Um, they have free trials over there. So if this looks interesting to you, um, check out check out that link. Um, and as always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. So let's get into into it. So I always start by looking at the historical earnings pattern on fast graphs, which is this dark green shaded area here. Um, let's shrink it down just a little bit because let's go right to here. Uh, so we have really long, great long-term growth. It looks like they had a little bit of a hiccup here in 2015. My guess is that's probably an acquisition year. I want to say they bought like QuickBooks or something. So these guys do like tax uh, preparation software, um, like TurboTax, I think is their main product. But they also have some other stuff that they bought over the years to kind of integrate in with that. Um, basically, they've grown earnings fantastically, um, or at least extremely well. Uh, over the past 20 years. I mean, you really couldn't ask for more. Uh, earnings growth is 16% for two decades on average. That's, And I think really they've eaten, I haven't double checked this, but um, they've really kind of taken business from H&R Block, yeah. So we see H&R Block had a, had a better um, recovery here during the pandemic, but really during this whole period we're into it, has been rising, H&R uh, Block has struggled to grow. I mean, they've made money, but they've struggled to grow. Um, so it seems like over time they, they've done a good job of taking business, um, of taking market share, which is great. So great business. This is one you definitely would want to own if you can get, um, get it at a good price. So that's what we're really gonna be analyzing here um, is what is a good price to pay for this where we can get um, above average returns based on the business earnings. So during, we're almost at an all-time high again, but during this all-time high, um, uh, late 2021, um, during the stimulus boom, uh, we were looking at almost $700 a share. Actually, it was it daily, it peaked over $700 a share, PE around 70 near the peak, right? So that's pretty high. <laughs> um, earnings growth has been I'm gonna start this in 2017 instead of 2016 because they had a really big um, kind of recovery year in that 20, which was 46% in that 2016. That's where I've been starting most of my analysis, but you wanna use your judgment here. So just if you've if you've never used fast graphs before, this is a good little trick. So it will it will take the earnings growth when you're first looking at it from whatever time frame that you set it at here. So my default is usually um, now I calculate my own earnings growth rate, so I do this by hand, um, but it's good to just kind of glance at it when you're just looking to get an idea of what you're dealing with. So the difference between if we just use this, the end of this year, which is just ending or just ended, okay? Um, so these are earnings that have already actually come in. If you start in 2016 and go to 2024, that earnings growth rate on fast graphs is 23.2. I don't know what sort of stock buybacks they've done, but basically it's over 20%, like it's a lot. But if you just move it one year, I actually don't know what's gonna happen, but and include, and you start from the year before that decline, right? That 23% earnings growth rate goes down to 17% earnings. So, so that's the difference an adjustment of one year can make. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just start in 2017, which is actually like halfway through 2016, because they have a, their year cuts off in the middle of the year. Um, and so that gives us about a 20% earnings growth rate on fast graphs um, from 2017 through 2024. And then if we extend out to next year, which is what I'm actually going to do, 
for my calculations, FastGraphs gives, again, just slightly under a 20% earnings growth, basic earnings growth rate from point to point. They don't have any down years, so you don't really have to adjust for that during this time period, earnings wise. Um, so really, really good earnings growth. Usually I cap my earnings growth estimates for businesses at 20% because it's very hard to grow. And I'm going to extrapolate this out for 10 years. So it's really hard to, for an established business to grow 20% kegger for 10 years. Um, and if you look at what analysts are expecting, they're expecting about 15% growth the next per year, the next three years. So even analysts are kind of not expecting 20%, the same sort of growth they had the past, say, 10 years going forward the next three years. So a person has to kind of make a choice. Usually I use the historical trend, which is about 20%. Um, but in this case, I want to be more conservative just because I don't know what their market cap is. Yeah, they're already nearly a 200 billion, they're 180, $172 billion market cap. Um, so you can imagine if that was growing at 20% for 10 years, you know, they're probably pushing a trillion or something. So we have to kind of just zoom out a little bit sometimes and say, okay, how much bigger can this business actually get? Now, if we have a bunch of inflation or something, um, or a bunch of the economy like takes off or something, it could, it could happen, but you know, you want to just have like realistic estimates. So when I do my, um, valuation analysis, I'm going to use 15%. That's what I'm using. But I'm also going to give you a number if, if somebody wanted to use 20%. Because it's such a great business, I think they have a pretty good moat, unless AI takes over or something. Um, and you should be able to kind of see that actually coming. You should be able to see some deterioration at least a little bit ahead of time. So the business is really so good that even if you if you used a 20% estimate and you paid a little bit too much, you could still maybe do fine if they don't hit that, right? So I'm going to give both of those. I'm going to give basically three numbers um, in terms of buy prices. One, using 15%, which would be my base case without any kind of recession. I'll give a recession buy price. If we do have a recession, the price to aim for. And then I'll give that 20% with no recession. So the really optimistic one where it's probably closer to like fair value, you know, if you get it, if you use those estimates. Um, and so that will kind of give you a ballpark range of how aggressive you want to be. Uh, I'm probably, I mean, we'll see what happens with the economy and whether we get a soft landing or not. Um, so probably, you know, we'll see what happens there. Right now I'm still using my recession metrics, but a person could convince me to come in on a normal 15% earnings growth assumption and just not worry about the recession, a potential recession. But the one thing that I do worry about is, I mean, these guys, yeah, there's regular like tax returns, but you think of all the small businesses that are probably um, using their services. And it's been, other than certain industries during COVID, like restaurants and hotels and stuff, um, most small businesses haven't experienced a really bad recession for 15 years. And so if we do have one or we do have a credit crunch, credit down cycle, that's going to affect these businesses quite a bit. And I think that, that now that these guys have grown and taken so much market share over the past 15 or 20 years, they're probably going to be more susceptible and more economically sensitive. So just kind of zooming out and thinking of it in that way, um, I'm still using the recession metric. It would be okay to kind of layer in a little early, I think, um, just because you know eventually, hopefully, <laughs> if we have a recession, it ends and they'll probably do just fine, you know, coming out of the next one. You might not get great returns, but you know the underlying qualities there um, and you know they're still growing well. They appear to be very well run as far as I can tell. So. So that's kind of my broader thoughts. So let's take that 15% earnings growth rate and run some numbers on it. Um, okay, so let's start. We have our 15% earnings growth rate. Over the past three years, cumulatively, they've grown revenue about 57%. So that's pretty much in line with this 15% annual earnings growth, Kager. Um, all right, so. If we go to the fast graph real quick, 
I, I'm pulling forward a year's worth of earnings. So that 19, we'll see if it loads, yeah. So that 1928 comes from this coming year. So I'm pulling that forward already. Uh, and I make a small adjustment for some debt, almost none really. So I'm treating the stock price as it's as if it's trading at $632. So what I wanna do is find the earnings yield for that, which is the earnings yield is the PE ratio inverted. So earnings over price, so earnings divided by price. You get a decimal when you do that. So this is 3.05% uh, earnings yield. So the way to think about that is if you paid $100 for the whole business, you would earn $3.05 a year in earnings. And you could, if you owned the business, you could take that money and go spend it on whatever you wanted to. And so what I want to know is if that $3.05 on every $100 of the business part of the business a person owns, if that grows at 15% a year, how much would I have on my $100 investment after 10 years? Um, so my spreadsheet's designed to calculate that. So we go over, so my $100 would go to 171, uh, $171.17. If you run a Kager calculation on that, you get 5.52%, which is, if you watch my last video on uh, st auto part stocks, you'll notice that the three main ones that were in the S&P 500 were right in this Kager too. So it kind of shows you this is pretty much what the market is valuing high quality S&P 500 businesses at on average. Like if you just randomly, or you just took an average of the stocks and you didn't market weight them or anything. Um, you didn't cap weight them. So 5.5%. Now, if we get more inflation, it's important to keep in mind that these guys have the ability to pass that cost on. Whereas if you bought like a bond at 4% over 10 years, um, if we do have more inflation than expected, then you're, you would lose your money if you held to maturity, right? If you weren't just trading it. Whereas this could rise if we had more inflation. The flip side is if we have a recession, this could fall. <laughs> so that's the risk that you take, but you get a basic understanding of what the market's pricing in, what will probably happen from a business earnings perspective if they can grow earnings 15% a year. So I like to see this Kager at 8% before I buy. I consider 6.5% 10 year Kager as fair value. So it's a little expensive right now and it would need to fall to, this doesn't include a recession, to three, right now it's trading at 620. It would need to fall to 381 um, to become just a basic buy. That's 38% lower than where it trades today. Now, if you wanna be more aggressive and say, hey, they've grown 20% the past decade each year. If analysts are just undershooting estimates and they can keep doing that again, then maybe we should assume they can grow 20%. I mean, I couldn't argue with that too much other than just my own conservatism. So I ran the numbers on that too. And the buy price there would, would be 508. So not really that much too much lower than where it is. It's 620 now. Um, so maybe what is that? Like 20% lower maybe or something? It's not too much lower than where it's at. That's if you think they can are really going to just keep crushing earnings for the next 10 years or so. Um recession wise. So I based this on, actually, I don't know if I left a note on where I did. I'm pretty sure I based this on 2008, but it might've been 2020. I didn't leave a note for me to know for sure. So this is, what did they kind of trade like during the last recession? And how might the market treat it if the market treats it similarly during another recession? Um, what would the price be? Like kind of what range would it be? And then usually I go a little bit off the bottom of that. Um, I have videos where I kind of explain the whole process, but the long and the short of it is the recession by price. Like let's say a recession started next year, the stock price started diving. We all kind of knew that we were having some kind of recession rather than coming in at 381, uh, 301.90 is where that recession by price is at. So about 300 bucks. Um, so about 50% lower basically than where it is now, which is pretty typical um, for a lot of the stocks that are in the S&P 500. There's quite a few that are only 30% away from like a recession by price. Um, these guys are priced a little more handsomely just because they've been so consistent, I think. I don't know what the PE is real quick. I'm going to look. 
So yeah, like a 36 PE. Again, it's not crazy overvalued if they're growing at 15% a year. You can just think of that kind of on the top of your head. Um, usually like a 30 PE and a 20% growth rate is like a, if they can really achieve 20% growth for 10 years, it's not just one year, right? The market is only gonna look ahead like 12 months. They have three, and if you look at three years, they basically probably just extrapolated out what they think the next 12 months is, analyst-wise. So they aren't gonna look out 10 years. They're gonna, and really think about, can they really grow that fast for every year for 20? That's a lot of compounding for a business that's nearly $200 billion already. So nobody in Wall Street, very few people <laughs> think that way. It's all about short-term stuff, which can be good for, for an individual investors because if you just go back to like, what did I say my buy price was? Like the normal one was 381. If you just go back to um, 2022, like a year and a half ago, or um, I guess almost two years ago now, uh, it traded down below 340. So that's almost where the recession, where my recession buy price is now. So it sounds like really low. Um, coming off this peak here, let me actually see on the fast graph coming off that 2021 going into 2020, and this isn't gonna be exact top to bottom. This is gonna be a pro approximate. The stock fell over 50%, yeah. So if it went from 716 down to 340 basically. So, and that's with no recession, all right? It was just, that was just the bust from the boom bust. And their earnings, I mean, they grew 20% for three years. That wasn't even really much of a boom for them but the stock price was kind of in a bubble. So it corrected back down to normal. But like I said, what, 30 PE? Like it got down to a 28 PE during that decline. So with 20% growth, you know, that could have been a buy. You know, if I wouldn't have my recession parameters on, it would have been a buy. So a person could have picked it up there if they just didn't think there was gonna be a recession. Um, but I didn't because I did. <laughs> so I think that's all for Intuit. If you have a request, let me know. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, if you found this useful, hit the like and subscribe button. I've been putting out about three videos a week or so. Uh, I'll probably th I think I'm gonna try to kind of aim for that pace going forward. I might do more in the winter, but um, so I put out a lot of videos and fulfill a lot of requests. And those Patreon links are down in the description. See everybody later, bye.